means go in this direction go in this direction meaning what you did so far is sufficient right but continue continue doing it. and this is how the the word anahu became a coin word for Arabic grammar anahu uh, because of the statement of uh, Ali ibn Nabi thought it. so what does the word what did the word nahwa Nahu it still means like direction. Direction. Uh, going, uh, heading towards. Mm -hmm. um, it also can be used as for an example. One example. Uh, in Arabic, there are approximately 14 to 15 sciences. 14 to 15 sciences. Uh, from amongst those sciences is a Nahu and a Asaf. These are the first two sciences of the Arabic language. And then you go into uh, a balaga and adept literature, rhetoric, um, a sheer poetry, and so forth. So if you want to uh, continue your studies in Arabic, however, usually a high school student they will graduate with at least a nahu and a sort of under their belts. Under their belts. Um, <clears throat> at one point, uh, the nahu and sort of they used to be one science. Uh, there used to be one science because um, some aspects of uh, Nahwa um, have to be understood through Salaf. It has to be understood through Salaf. So at one point they were, uh, it were, they both were one science. However, they found out that Salaf was, uh, you know, was developing, so they separated it from the Nahwa. And the Nahwa, it is pretty much how a word ends. How does this word end? Does it end with Adamba? Does it end with Fatha? Does it end with Kasra or Sukun? Uh, or any other uh, additional branches that, that stem off of that? Uh, however, Asarf, it deals with how the word changes. Right? How the word changes from inside. Right? Masculine to feminine to singular, dual, and plural, from past to present, uh, future, or even the command and so forth and so on. So this is the difference between the two sciences. Does it also deal with um, 
like what the word is, um, sacrum or um, mortality? Um, yes, this is also part of that's this section uh, of, of Psalms oh, as well. That's um, it's specifically uh, uh, some issues are specifically for the Sarv and some are specific for, for Nakwa, but there are areas that overlap. And we will see that again, but not the full picture, only what's uh, only what you need uh, for the Nakwa. Uh, <clears throat> this text that you're going through over is an, an Ajulamiya. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually a Nakwa text. And again, uh, in order for you to understand some aspects of a Nakwa, you have to understand some aspects of a Sarv so that you can, uh, beforehand, so that you can understand the grammatical analysis of a particular word. Um, and that's my job. I'm going to do the sarf, and who says Muhammad, who's, he's going to do the naho aspect, uh, uh, on a, the actual explanation of the method. Um, and, you know, so you have the textbooks and before you, but I'm going to just provide you some additional, you know, handouts, um, some charts that you may need to understand the sarf aspect of it. So this is kind of like the supplementary part of the of it. And <clears throat> lastly, um, there are two schools of or major schools of Arabic grammar. You have Basari and you have Kufi. Uh, they're both located in Iraq. Uh, for example, you have Sibaway, Way, um, he was Kufi. Um, you have Ibn Malik, he has the Al Alfiya Ibn Malik, uh, he's Basari. And there are certain parts of the world, you know, uh, have a different school of thought. Uh, just m minor, you know, uh, understandings, for example, uh, in Basari, they say uh, El, right? Like El, uh, explaining like El Kitab. But in Kufi, they may say Alif Walam. In uh, uh, Basari, they say Jar, Jar, which we're all familiar with. But in Kufi, they say Khaf, right? Khaf, which probably was mentioned today, inshallah. Um, so today, inshallah, we're going to talk about Aqsam and Islam. Um, we're going to pause here for the Salat. And then when we come back, we get into the first lesson um, of this series, inshallah.